Today we have some huge news to talk about with the Wheel of Time. A major character has been cast, and there's a lot to talk about surrounding that. We have some updates on filming locations that may give us some insight into where our characters are going in Season 2, and we'll break down some social media posts that the cast gave us that give some hints as to the filming schedule. And then, of course, there's an article suggesting that there may be another Taviran. And then I'll be announcing the winner to last week's contest and announcing a new one for this week. Tons to get to, all of this and more on this week's Weekly Wheel of Time News. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but with spoilers through book three of the Wheel of Time, if you haven't read up to the Dragon Reborn, watch this video at your own risk. All right, first up on the agenda today is an update on filming for season two. Although it doesn't look like all the filming has ended, we'll talk more about that in a moment, it does look like many of the main cast are done with their portions of the filming. This information comes from social media accounts, links to the main actors, Hamed Anamashan, the actor that plays Loyal, is back in London, so he's no longer in Prague. Additionally, Kira Coveney is also no longer in Prague. She's the actress playing Elaine. Priyanka Bose, the actress that plays Alana Mosvani, she was a fan favorite from season one. She posted a selfie with the caption, Season Wrap, seemingly indicating that her time filming was wrapped. Now, it's unclear if there are going to need to be reshoots, but it does appear that many of the actors are headed home and they are done with their parts of the filming. Now, all of this talk of filming ending for some of the actors does not mean that it's over for good, though. Watchseries.com has reported that the crew from The Wheel of Time have started heading to Oarzazait, Morocco, to start filming scenes for Season 2. Now, it had previously been reported that there would be scenes shot in Morocco, but it was unclear when and what scenes, and if that was confirmed. It appears now that The Wheel of Time Block 3 director, Maha Vrillo, is directing one of the episodes in Morocco, which implies that the parts of the story that will be shot in these areas are obviously from episodes 5 and 6 of Season 2. However, Sanaa Hamri, the director for Block 2 and 4, was also in OR Zizate in January, so more of the season might be filmed in Morocco than we originally had thought. The filming seems to be set to start the first week of March based on the various news reports in the area, and this is the same area that was used to film The Gladiator, The Mummy, and Game of Thrones. There are also a number of studios nearby that were used to film the movie Kingdom of Heaven. It's a beautiful area, and it does beg the question of what scenes they are filming in that desert landscape. Now, the Aiel come to mind, obviously. I've seen some speculate that it might be Tyr, but I'm not too sure about that given the landscape of Tyr that we already saw in Season 1. My money is on the Aiel Waste, and we know Rafe already told us that we're going to see the Aiel sooner, and we're going to see more of them than we thought. These areas might be locations in the Waste, like Cold Rock's Hold, for instance, or we could see the Aiel meeting before they come into the Westlands. Perhaps we'll see Egwene there in the Dream. It does appear, though, that the scenes filmed here will span over many different episodes, so it sounds like it'll be a bigger set than we might have originally thought. What do you think the areas are going to be used for? Are we looking at the Waste here? Let me know what you think in the comments of the video. So, Screen Rant is not exactly known for their hard-hitting journalism when it comes to the Wheel of Time. They often put some of the worst written articles out and the most misinformed. And I'm not sure that's the case in this instance or not, but either way, what they did release is worthy of discussion. So, Screen Rant released an article that essentially announced that they thought Elaine Tricand would be a sixth Taviran for season two of the show. Now, if you're not aware, Kira Coveney has been announced as Elaine Tricand for season two of The Wheel of Time. Also, it turns out that all five of the Emmons Field group are considered Taviran for the show. We learned that from Podlin Fane at the end of season one. So they're proposing that Elaine is going to be number six. Now, this is not based in any fact, and it's entirely speculation, so I don't want this coming across as proof that this has happened. It has not. But it is interesting to speculate on. Now, I'll be honest, I am not a fan if it is the direction that they're going with this. I am already not much of the fan of them making Nynaeve and Egwene Taviran. I think it kind of dilutes what being a Taviran means, if every single character has plot armor of sorts. And I also think that it can take away from what Egwene and Nynaeve accomplish on their own. In my eyes, characters like Matt Cawthon in the books are defined by their plot armor, and they sort of stumble into things and let them happen. But that's not so much true with Egwene. She earns all of her big moments, and I just think not having that be a part of her character makes her a better character. Now, in terms of Elaine being a Taviran, even taking my own feelings out of it uh, about expanding the number of Taviran, I think that it's not likely because I think they want to make the Emmons Field group special. 
and she can be a strong channeler and a friend without also being a Taviran. You don't need to make all of the main characters a Taviran. But what do you all think though? Let me know what you think in the comments of the video. And before we get to the major news, let me quickly thank the video sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is the world's largest provider of audiobooks, and they have been a longtime sponsor of the channel. Now, obviously, the Wheel of Time audiobooks are amazing, with most people loving the experience listening to them. Kate Redding, Michael Kramer, they're awesome. They'll be at Whatcom, by the way. But there are so many other awesome audiobooks on Audible. One I'm currently listening to on my drive to work is Multipliers by Liz Wiseman that talks about the power of multiplier leaders. I highly suggest checking that one out. The great thing though here is if you have never listened to audiobooks before and you're not sure if you're going to like them, Audible is offering my listeners a free audiobook of your choice just for checking out the service. Just head to www.audibletrial.com and sign up for the free trial. You'll get to keep the book regardless if you keep the service or not, and you greatly help out the channel as well. Thank you, and let's get back to the news. So all the way back in July of last year, we found out that Gary Beadle had been cast in an unknown role on the show. Now, we weren't even sure at the time which season he would be acting in, let alone what character he'd be playing, but the fact that his casting was announced so late, being July, it implied that it was probably a season two role. Well, now we finally know the answer to that question. It appears that Gary Beadle has been cast in the role of Elias Machira, another wolf brother and mentor figure to Perrin. Now, this was confirmed by Watseries.com on the actor's CV, and he had previously been speculated to be playing Elias due to a wolf head emoji that another actor tweeted at him. Now, Gary Beadle has over 70 credits on his resume with roles in theater, films, television, including a role in a miniseries on Amazon Prime called Small Axe. I'll link to the Watseries article so you can read more about it. But the thing I most want to talk about with this is what they're going to be doing with this character. The Dusty Wheel did almost an entire episode on the topic last week, and I think it's worthy of some speculation here. The fact that we are not getting Elias until now implies some obvious changes to his arc. In the books, Elias mentors and helps Perrin and Egwene when they are separated from the group at Shadar Logoth. He also introduces Perrin to the wolves at that point. Now, obviously, that is not what happened in season one. So now that we know he'll be introduced, we have to wonder how he will be introduced into the story. I have a couple theories, though. First, it's very possible that Elias will be combined with someone like Huron. And it could be hiding that he was a former warder, or he could they could be eliminating that part of his story altogether. They could combine Elias and Huron and have the fact that Elias is a wolf brother be the replacement for the sniffing ability, which I think actually makes a lot of sense to me. That always seemed to be something that did not fit with the rest of the story. Now, another theory here would be that the group searching for the horn, which I think Perrin will be a part of, given the ending of season one, will run into Elias on the road, and he will help the party in some way. I think it's possible that Huron could be completely cut rather than combining the characters, and Elias will just join the search for the horn and help Perrin learn to speak with wolves at the same time. There are a number of other theories out there as well, but I am curious what you all think. Let me know in the comments of the video. Now, in some community news you may or may not have seen, but we have some new regular writers on thegreatblight.com and some new articles there that are worth checking out. As I mentioned previously, Bane and Chiat, a pretty beloved member of the Wheel of Time community and someone I got to spend some time with at JordanCon last year, has started writing a column that releases on Tuesdays. The column is called Maiden's List and features top 10 style lists based around the Wheel of Time that are also interesting, entertaining, and a lot of fun. So far, she's written about the top snacks, read into that metaphor however you want, and the top 10 fights from the Wheel of Time, which, come to think of it, would probably make a great video as well. Now, we have another new writer starting soon, as well as a few others that are in the works. I'm excited to see all the new written content out there. If you like the content, the best thing that you can do, though, is share it on social media platforms like Facebook and get as many eyeballs on it as you can. Written content doesn't get automatically shared like YouTube does, so we really need the generation from people sharing it and sending it out in Facebook groups and all that. Help Bane and Chiad get some views on her articles. All right, so let's get into the contests. Last week's contest was to leave a comment on the video with your rating for the first season of the show. I wanted to see how engaged with the show people watching news videos were, and to no surprise, most of you loved it. I actually didn't average out all of the scores, but I would say the average from eyeballing it comes somewhere around 7.5 out of 10, which is pretty high. But let's pick a winner. The winner from last week's contest is going to get a free t-shirt of their choice from WeShopWheelOfTime.com, and that winner is Karen Taylor. Karen, message me on Discord. I'll get your details, and we'll get you out your shirt. But now, time for this week's contest. This one's going to be a very simple one, and I'm going to be giving away another t-shirt from ShopWheelOfTime.com. First, 
As always, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and that you like the video. Then I posted this video on Twitter like I do every video. All you have to do is go quote tweet that specific tweet that I tweeted out this video and respond by telling me your opinion on one of the pieces of news that we talked about today. Pretty simple. So to summarize, like the video, subscribe to the channel, then head to Twitter and quote tweet your response to some of the news on the tweet I threw out announcing this video. Pretty simple. Big thank you to my patrons. I just had surgery and was not able to put out my normal number of videos and your support really helps me keep this going. I appreciate all of you. You can see some of my higher tier patrons up on the screen right now. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Check out my Patreon page if you want to support the channel. The money goes to things like getting more writers for thegreatflight.com and helping pay for that website. Thank you all who support me. Also, check out some of these videos here on the right that you also might enjoy. Thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out.